So you want to know what it's like to live in San Leandro, California? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about today. So let's get to it. Welcome to the Living in Oakland, California channel. I'm Rich Fleming, your local realtor, and I'm here to teach you everything you need to know about living, working, playing, sleeping, eating, whatever, in Oakland and the rest of the San Francisco East Bay. I get a ton of people who reach out to me with questions about what it's like to live here, how to transition here, what they need to know before they get here, and I absolutely love it. That is why I do these videos. So if you got questions, you know what to do. Give me a call, drop me a text, send me an email, whatever works for you, because when it comes to helping you, transition to Oakland and the rest of the San Francisco East Bay, I got your back. Now in today's video, we are going to talk about what it's like to live in the city of San Leandro. So as I always like to do in these videos, I'll start out with where you can find San Leandro on the map. So if you look at the map, you find Oakland and you head south on Highway 880 or east on Highway 580, you will find the city of San Leandro. It is immediately to the south of Oakland. San Leandro was incorporated in 1872. It covers about 13.2 square miles and has a population of around 91,000 people. So that gives it a population density of about 5,900 people per square mile. So that's pretty high by Bay Area suburban standards, not so high by many other regions in the country, but you know, it's a pretty densely populated suburban area for the Bay Area. Now, throughout most of the late 20th century, San Leandro was really a light industrial and warehouse oriented city. And you can still see a lot of this on the west side of San Leandro. There are still a lot of warehouses and a lot of small industrial oriented business on that side of San Leandro. However, really San Leandro has become a lot more of a bedroom community. Now, like a lot of the towns and cities that run along the 880 freeway, it has kind of developed into three primary areas. One is the area west of the 880 freeway, and this is where you will find, once again, a lot of that light industrial, a lot of the warehouses, and it's interspersed with a lot of the older, smaller homes in San Leandro. Then there is the area that is between the 880 freeway and the 580 freeway. This is where downtown San Leandro is located, and there are a lot of great little homes and communities in this area. It doesn't have the industrial feel or orientation that the far western side of the city does. Then there is the part of San Leandro that lies to the east of the 580 freeway. You have some great views from there. It is in the hills, the San Leandro Hills, and it is a very quiet area and probably one of the more popular areas in San Leandro to live. Now, some of the largest employers in San Leandro are the San Leandro Unified School District, Kaiser Permanente, which has a hospital in San Leandro, the city of San Leandro, OSI Soft, which is a software development company, and it was recently, about a year, two years ago, I believe, purchased by a British firm, but they still have significant operations in San Leandro, I believe, and the Coca-Cola bottling plant in San Leandro. But most people, especially if they work in the tech sectors, really have to commute to jobs either in San Francisco, Oakland, or down to Silicon Valley. San Leandro has made a concerted effort to become more of a tech hub, but it hasn't been a super successful transition yet. The jury is still out. We'll have to see how that develops in future years. Now, as far as shopping is concerned in San Leandro, there are four or five shopping centers in the city, and some of them include the Marina Square, the Westgate Mall, the Bayfair Mall, and people do shop in the downtown area of San Leandro. Now, San Leandro's downtown area is primarily comprised of small mom and pop businesses, and has some great small restaurants in the area. Now, there are people that feel that downtown San Leandro could use a facelift, and that is probably a little bit true. It is really comprised of small mom and pop businesses. There are some great little restaurants in that area, and I personally like that it doesn't have that 
you know, generic corporate feel that you can get in just about every city, but it could use some upgrades as far as the numbers and types of businesses that are located there. It's a nice and acute area, but it isn't a destination shopping location. Now let's talk transportation. And this is one of San Leandro's biggest selling points. It has excellent access to the 880 freeway, the 580 freeway and the 238 freeway. So it makes it very easy to travel both north and south through the area and head out east towards the Tri-Valley, Pleasanton, Dublin, or even out towards Stockton. San Leandro has two BART stations, the San Leandro station and the Bayfair station, and access to those stations make it very easy for people to get into San Francisco or Oakland or head to Fremont towards Silicon Valley for work. So let's talk education. And if you've watched other videos on my channel, you know that it is very common for cities to have multiple school districts covering them. And that is definitely the case here in San Leandro. So San Leandro has three school districts and those districts are the San Leandro Unified School District, and that covers the majority of the city. But parts of the city are covered by the San Lorenzo Unified School District, and that's mostly in the area of the Washington Manor neighborhood of San Leandro. And then parts of it are covered by the Castro Valley Unified School District, and that area is primarily in the hills of San Leandro to the east of Highway 580. So you have to make sure when you're buying a home or just moving to San Leandro in general, that you check what school district is covered by the area you're in, if that is important to you. So let's talk about housing in San Leandro. Now, the average price of a home in San Leandro is about $825,000. And the type of housing you will primarily find in San Leandro is two and three bedroom homes built normally between the 1930s and about the 1960s. You get a lot of bungalows. You get a wide variety of styles that were built during that time frame. You can find homes that are newer in design than that and were built more recently than that time frame. And you can find homes that are older than that. But the primary construction of homes in San Leandro was really between, say, the early 20th century up to about the 1960s or so. And that's what you can expect. It is a great area to find smaller starter homes and you can find somewhat larger three bedroom, two bathroom homes in the city. Now the prices of homes has increased about 6.5% in the last 12 months and the volume or the number of homes that have been sold has actually decreased by about 16%. And this is a pattern that is unfortunately very common in the Bay Area right now. There is an excess demand over supply and that is one of the driving forces that has driven prices up over the last couple of years. Now, if you're looking to rent in San Leandro, the prices vary dramatically depending on the size of the unit and where it's located in the city. But for a one bedroom, you should anticipate paying anywhere from about $1,800, say upwards of about $2,400, $2,500 per month. And two bedrooms, you should expect to pay from about $2,100 or so, upwards to $3,000 or over. So for a relatively small city, San Leandro has great access to the outdoors. It has 23 parks, I believe, and it has access to Lake Chabot, which is technically in Oakland and Castro Valley, but very nearby San Leandro. So it is easy to get to the outdoors. You also have the San Leandro Marina, which is a great area to bike, walk along. It is very beautiful along the bay right there. You can actually see uh, part of the Oakland airport from the San Leandro Marina. Now from the San Leandro Marina, you can see the views of San Francisco. It is absolutely beautiful. There are a couple of restaurants, one of which Horatio's has been here forever. It is kind of a mainstay of San Leandro. One of the reasons San Leandro is known per se. That is in the Marina area and it is a great place to walk and just you know, see the bay. So what are a few pros of living in San Leandro? Well, number one, it's location. It is very centrally located in the East Bay. It makes it relatively simple to get down towards Fremont, Silicon Valley. Definitely simple to get to Oakland, San Francisco, especially on BART. Driving in the Bay Area can be a challenge. I don't care where you live, but uh, you're, you're on a map not too far from San Francisco. So that is one of its major benefits. The second benefit is that relatively speaking, 
by Bay Area standards, San Leandro is still a relatively affordable community. Now, when you hear a price, medium price of $825,000, you might not think so, but you have to look at it in terms of what homes are going for in other communities nearby. Now, San Leandro, as I mentioned, is a great town if you are getting into the housing market and you don't require homes that have a lot of space. Now, what are some of the drawbacks of living in San Leandro? Well, one, it really doesn't have much of a nightlife per se, if that's important to you. And I'm not saying clubs and bars and shutting the town down, but even a region that's very walkable with restaurants and things to do, live music, it really doesn't have that. It kind of rolls up the streets uh, when the streetlights come on. So, you know, around nine o'clock, the town is really winding down. The second potential drawback of San Leandro, well, it's kind of related to the first one. San Leandro is very much a bedroom community now. Like I said, you do have some light industrial on the west side of the city, but most people have to leave the city to commute. So you have to pretty much plan to commute down to Silicon Valley if you work that direction or into Oakland or San Francisco. So another nearby city to San Leandro is Hayward. Hayward is directly to the south of San Leandro and I did a video on it. So check out this video over here if you wanna learn more about Hayward. If you have any questions about anything I covered in this video, you know what to do. Drop me a text, give me a call, send me an email, because when it comes to helping you transition to Oakland and the rest of San Francisco East Bay, I got your back. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button so YouTube knows to show it to other people with interests similar to yourself. Hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you know each and every time I drop a new video, and I'll catch you in the next video.